Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a two versus two on McKechen, McKechen, Mc somebody's war. A two versus two. Yes, indeed, we shall be watching Croatian fighter and T A W Dami Chem or Chem fighting for the Americans, fighting for the Second Infantry Division in a brutal fight versus your offbeat dude and Al Jazz. Fighting for the, oh, I don't know, let's just say the 116th Panzer Division. Somewhere here in the Hedgehogs. Engineers are moving out. We're seeing a dual barrack start from the Wehrmacht. From the Americans, not the Wehrmacht, obviously, though they are going for a dual Wehrmacht quarters. Not really much else they can go for unless one of them decides to rush straight for a Ford Barracks. Two pioneers from both players. Looks like they are staying rather close to each other, whereas the Americans are spreading out a bit more initially. So obviously trying to sort of cover each other by the looks of it. And first unit out for Aljas is a bike. First unit out for your offbeat dude is a Fox Grenadier squad. Raven on the other hand going to be popping out for the Allies. Using a bit of aggressive movement in there, going for the few points right here and here. Bike going out could perhaps try and do a bit of harassment. So Fultz Grenadiers are around here. Engineers, Looks like a slide your force is moving right hand side. Engineers, Good luck, have fun. Bike engaging the engineers right here and already Hank goes down. We do see a nice sandbagging right here instead though we do see damage him retreating. Realising he might not be doing too much here against the bike. So nice initial harassment right there by the Wehrmacht. Fultz is going to follow up, although at the same time the right hand side shall be a bit vulnerable. Then again he could have tried engaging the rifle right here and then support waited for the Fultz to support, but there we go. Moving in. Sandbag going down for the Fultz Grenadiers. Rifle pulling up in light cover. The Fultz Gunners will have heavy if they can actually hit, and there we go. Rifleman will be losing this fight, although they could try and force away the back. Oh, never mind. Geet moves in, pushes them out of cover, even gets one. Fultz going to seeing a flanking assault going in from the Americans. Nicely done right there, and there's no support so far to really help hold this off. Nicely done, nicely done. The Fultz are in chaos. We're seeing tank traps being desperately laid down, sort of at least temporarily block the G8, but doesn't work. MG42 is arriving. And the Americans swiftly retreat, except for one squad. We're seeing other Falcons moving up, but there are more riflemen. This is quickly turning out to be a rather loose engagement, which the Wehrmacht is definitely not doing well with, because the troops cannot support each other. And again, Falcons are very much dependent on that. Pioneers getting caught off here. They could get cut down on the retreat. Falcons being hunted down. Oh dear, oh dear, this is absolute chaos. This is a poor start from the Wehrmacht. I mean, a full aggressive American start can be very difficult to mean, pull off against, and I've... No idea why he did not send in the troops for a more secure route. Instead, he might even lose several Fultz Grenadiers right here. Definitely not good. Now Al Jazz is pushing in some of his own, but already now the casualties have been heavy. And we're seeing something going on here in the barn, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. Someone's hiding. Oh, it's Jürgen. MG42, and we're seeing sandbags down here. The Wehrmacht has already been pushed onto the defensive. And already now the Americans are securing a large part of the map. Your offbeat dude was definitely off the proper path and exposed quite a few of his Fultzkanes to fighting they should not have been in without support. Again, very important to remember Fultzkanes work best when they're working with something else. And that should generally be taken into account. Right here, though, the riflemen do get quite the Wehrmacht beating. That's so far the only real victory for your offbeat dude so far. Going for the victory point there, but we are seeing Americans pushing up as well. Mines right here to cover the western path. And we're seeing Sandmax going down. Nicely done. Mines there. No support or we are seeing the MG42 pulling up. Pioneers are still hiding there. Fultz is holding up their MG there. Looks like Algez is quickly shifting up to a slightly more defensive approach. Holding most of the things. But ooh, going for the victory point. MG42 will need to pull up here. Well, we're going to be a bit of bother with the troops and their heavy cover. Mine goes off all right here. Aggressive mining by the Americans. Lovely job, lovely job. And Browning Automatics, the Americans are really keeping up the pressure. Excellent job right there by Dami Kem. Let's go look at the Croatian fighter. 
who I'm going to guess is from Croatia. Bizarre wild guess out of the blue, I know. Still not sure what's going on here. Might he be trying to set up a four barracks in the barn? Could be. And nice aggressive push up here by the Americans once more. Catching some full Scandinavians who are quickly pulling up in a desperate attempt to keep the Americans out of the flank. But again, the simple fact that your offbeat dude is simply not able to present a credible force and constantly the right flank is quite exposed, which makes it incredibly easy for the Americans to just push in everywhere. And problem is, Algez's force is way too static to sort of keep things clear as well because he's got too many MGs, not enough infantry. It's sort of a slightly unfortunate unit composition from both players, but largely because your offbeat dude keeps sending in his troops rather piecemeal, which is only to the advantage of the Americans. He should be sort of focusing up the full clans and larger forces and then push them in, possibly some of them with MP40s, but at the moment again he's letting them fight one on one, which is pretty much the one spot you should not let them fight in. Oh, Browning automatic drop there. Should be secured, I think, by Al Jazz. Rifle finding him with his Fulcan's bike running about. Two kills so far, Rifle forced off there. Finding contingent here, Fulcan's versus the engineers in the build. Oh, this is not good at all. You're off beat, dude. Again, you're off beat. You're getting absolutely hammered. We're losing ground. And looks like a Ford Barracks is up there, I think. Rather than more false guns would have been a better choice rather than something like that. We are seeing a bunker up, although I think perhaps something a bit more closer to the center since you are going to have to push in here would be better rather than this one, which is going to be rather minimal in usage since most of the fighting will probably be shifting towards here as you're sort of trying to go on the offensive. Rather than going here for the cutoff point, rather bold. And here, so and bike support pushed them off. Puncher Schreck in support. Algas is worried about enemy vehicles. Krieg bags up. We do see a motor pull up for creation fighter and an armor car on the way. Ravin pushing away the pioneers. Mine down there for Al Jazz. Fulcan's there. Trying to cut down the rifle, but again, where are the support for the Fulcan? Fulcan's Ravin scored down for Croatian fighter. At least he's doing something there. And certainly, I mean, on this large map with all this, there's certainly going to be a lot of losses. But again, the main problem for Dwarf Beat Dude is basically his usage of the Fulcan is it's not really the good one. Again, when you're using force guns, this definitely I would say to more than novice players. Again, you should f Grounds work them with something else. They should not be fighting on their own. Folks kind of yes are largely awful when they're fighting on the own. Now, on the other hand, if they're fighting for example with other folks guns, they become much stronger. It's a sort of weird synergistic effect. Or oh, with pioneers, with something else. But generally, folks guns perform much better when they're with their own. It's not because of bonuses. It's just because how they work. They are much lower numbers in general, so of course, if there's numbers, they sort of get some advantages. Plus, of course, two Fultz kind of squads, of course, can sort of master some greater fire. Or something like that. Either way, now I'm pushing in, though some of them actually take nasty losses. We're also seeing grenades up for the Americans, dropping in on the Fultz, all the right from the app, taking some considerable heavy losses. Engineers pushing in for another surprise veterans one up for the full kind of ears. Again, the bunker right here. They're teaming too much. Pack up. Ray are moving up around as well. Fulz is taking a bit of a blasting right there. MG up there for your offbeat dude. You might want to pull that up there. And there might also want to be some harassment over there. Well, at the same time, let me get the Americans have currently managed to siege a large part of the map. Hardly again to the rather or piecemeal nature of Hold your offbeat dude, this which rate, is a bit tragic. Also looks like a medic station is up for Dami Chem. That is also good, in particular when there's so much infantry from both players. Something like a medic station is going to do absolutely great, and we're seeing two medic stations, in fact. Pretty clever that, and also note here we are only seeing one trio center because again, why build two when one is enough when you can just use your teammates? So again, very good team play right there. Very, very good. Certainly something to note for allied players. And again, less than good medic banker placement. Something closer to here would have been better. And again, there needs to be improved. There we go. Two Fulton Squads fighting together. Opening up on to Rifleman. Now they might have some of their more natural advantages a bit more enhanced. 
And then you go to the right from the BS now with the old BS up for crazy fans. And then they're not going to be nothing particular now. That three squads are moving in. Let's go look at Al Jazz. With one Grenadier squad, one Fuxka squad, two MGs and two packs and a bike. Stormtroopers arriving for your offbeat, dude. The MG is there. Why? Why? Is it there? Seems a bit senseless. Getting assaulted right here. Stormtroopers moving in. Then it's getting dumped. Oh, armor car taking hits from the Panzer Wreck. Getting awfully close. But seems to actually be escaping. Packed down. Fultz goes push up here against lots of flame for engineers. Though they're actually getting cut down. Creation fighter suffering considerable casualties. Stormtroopers need to be careful here. Grenades getting dumped at the Americans. Heavy losses for the Americans. In fact, catching quite a few here in a several explosions of grenades. One squad, in fact, could be lost. And then we got but more rather than pushing up there. Get on the right side of the cover. Again, he might be too occupied with going on with too much as well. He's spreading out to fight attention-wise. And attention is quite an important resource. Retreat! Oh, no. Ach, du lieber. Stormtrooper's gone. Well, well, yes, it's ready to push up, but that was definitely a not good at, at all good loss. Bet 22 on the way. More grenades. Rushing straight into it. Dami Chem takes some nasty losses there. Rifle and Fultz Grenadiers. Grenadiers fighting on. Getting into the nearby buildings. Getting the drop. All the grenades are popped into the buildings. Then he has to escape with some loss. Although they can still get back in and overall get the advantage. Uh, they aren't actually firing up here, Al Jats. That's less good. Oh well. Rifle was still forced off. But still, they all took out the Storms with score and a Panzer which is. Definitely not good. Rifle here finding versus the false candidates. Might get off a grenade because they're a bit too close to each other, which we should all be careful about. Veteran D2 up for Al Jazz's infantry. Making a bit of progress there. That is good. Again, the you're off beat dude needs to move this MG. I mean, there's an MG there, an MG there. He needs to pay attention to what his MT teammates MGs are doing. Instead, try to support his own troops with that MG. He might actually find himself doing better and be able to lay on some pressure on the Americans. Mine goes off here, stopping a pioneer in a rather explosive fashion. Minesweepers up. That is good. Americans actually laying down mine. That is also good. But sneaking through here. And get running into a nice squad of rifles with grinding automatics. Kind of pushing up. Veterans too far. A bit of protection. Granata. And forcing the Yanks out of the cover. Blowing up the fence. Armor coming up in the you flank. Causing die. problems for the Pioneers. And some other Pioneers finding here. Versus Engineers. Both with flamethrowers. And the Engineers actually look to be losing. <laughs> Rather desperate finding from the 116th. Sturm Armory up. That's about damn time. More Grenadiers on the way for Al Jazz. And a Howard's out for Dami Champ. They could at this stage then consider actually getting a half track for LGS. Popping in some Grenadiers with Panzer Rex, driving in and knocking it out. That would be my initial suggestion on sorting this out rather quickly. Observation post ups are clearly hoping for some munitions. Pack sneaking up. Pioneers under heavy artillery fire. Building has seen better days. Nice sandbags there. Panzer Schreck deployed and ready. Unit's moving up here but are coming under swift fire from the false guys. And again, you're off beat dude. Finally cooperating with them. Armored car out. In fact, we're seeing a second one out. Oh, engineers are present. Now they're going to run into the armored car. Raven here coming under heavy fire. Armor car moving in from the side. Fultzkers flanking in from the side. And there we go. The Raven ex being exposed to quite a bit of fire. Looks like they will largely make it out of there alive. Another engagement out here by the farmstead. At the same time, Armor car pushes up here. Destroyed engine. Get some more engineers though. Looks like one engineer squad in fact went down for damage him. Raven. Oh, laying down mines pretty aggressively. Nice job, nice job. Grenade at the full screen here is killing only one. Elite infantry now up for Aldias, giving quite a health bonus for his troops. That is definitely the way to go forwards. Armor car pushing in here. Should be careful though. Forsicht, Forsicht. 
And Alter very careful in particular since the... This could be an excellent spot for a true strike. And there we go, Tiller going in on this huge column of German infantry. Move! Men, get off the road! Get off the road, you dumb cuffs! Trying to knock this out by the armored car here, getting blasted by the anti-tank gun. Stu moves up, Fulton is forced away due to the rifle on the, in the house next by, and of course, the artillery. Stu Fortune not going to do much. Greyhound here, stopped by a pack. Making a bit of progress on the right side. Rifle flanking the anti-tank gun. And MG down, Stu immobilized. Chaos and carnage everywhere, and again, Get that MG out of there, Heinz. Let's go look at your offbeat, dude. Fault is reinforcing. Stu opens up. Pack gone, BAR dropped. So far also, can't help but notice that none of the Browning Automatics lost have been picked up by the Germans so far. That's not good. Not good at all, and definitely something they could definitely have benefited from. Since any sort of increase of firepower should always be accepted. And also find it interesting that Algia so far has largely been focusing on Panzer checks that yes, largely infantry only. I mean, I think Algia should have at least considered one MG for his companies, or at least not upgrading. Just a casual thought. Of course, I'm not saying you should upgrade all of them with it or something like that, but even one I think might have proven to make a difference against all the infantry because, again, no, the, the Americans so far have largely been relying on infantry and upgrading them. So, I mean, one kind of air squad with an MG might have paid off. Assault going up there, the uh, engineers and such fighting, and Waterloo really going in. Hits the stoop, direct hit, pioneers down, need to retreat from here. Look, Sook. <coughs> And a grenadier squad went down to a grenade. Absolutely nasty. And another air machine gun in place for an up creation fighter. Armor car fighting here successfully. Minor progress being made here. Minor, I'd say. And the troops right here getting stopped by the 30 caliber emplacement. Suppressing and pinning the grenadiers. Trying to knock it out, but they're not quite succeeding. Creation fighters right now fighting against the Fultz grenadiers. Of fighting forwards. Getting shot at quite a bit. Already down to half health. And maybe a few men. Again, be careful with Fultz in particular moving up to them. And there we go. In fact, we could see Creighton fight and lose an entire rifleman squad. There we go. And the Fultz has pretty much suffered nothing. And we are seeing the Rangers now getting assaulted. In fact, Rangers have been called in for a dummy team. And we're also seeing tank destroyers out. So tank depot is obviously out for Creighton fighter. Which, of course, might now make the Panzer X a bit more sensible. Volkswagen's moving to the right side. Greyhound patrolling about. <laughs> pushing up there again. Germans taking a bit of trouble pushing away the Americans. Volkswagen is suffering rather grievously here. And again, your off dude has uh, not really a large army, and again, he's not been playing the best, I think. Made a bunch of mistakes here and there. Grenades going off. Lots of flame throws against the Rangers right there. Looks like your feet do this on it. Assembled an assault pioneer force. MG on the retreat there. Ravn having made one push and now encountering another MG. And the squad goes down. Oh. Firing artillery right here. Oh, retreat out. Yes, retreat. Wixook. But again, you should be careful about climbing up your troops when you know there are howitzers. And this one has definitely proven itself to be quite the threat. Nice penetration by Algiers on the left hand side. Might even get the medic station there. Or we are seeing a nice assault force from again from Dami Chem to try and sort it out. We do now retreat. Grenade to cover it. And there we go. Mine could also be used there to cover the retreat. Nice job, nice job. Going for the point right there as well again. And Grenadier Squad finally reformed. In fact, that's the first one reformed again. I mean, its position has not been the best. I think it would have benefited more had it been here. You know, closer to where most of the fighting have been. 
Or at least he'd gain another one, so you know, like this one, they're sort of, they can cover a bit more overall. Nibelwerf is now coming out. I'm not entirely convinced he wants Nibelwerf, in particular with the Howards on the field. I think he would benefit more from perhaps some Grenadiers himself, some Stormtroopers, some more Stu 42s, just some more infantry in general. And something a bit more directly offensive. Grenade going off against Grenadiers of him. Oh, you're off beat, dude. Oh, Rifemen set off their own mine. And the Gunners here trying to force another assault on the 30 caliber in placement. And a second howl trap for the Americans. Carnage, chaos. And against the Gunners, come on, Al Jazz, retreat. Your troops are way too close to each other. Fortress here suffering their pin by the Raven and the find More artillery are going in. Absolutely insane. The Fulkers need to retreat. Carnage everywhere. The 116th Panzer Division is floundering in the mud. Let's return to Damika. Oh! That was close. The medic's pulling back the wounded. So many wounded. And looks like Creation Fire is getting ready for some sort of push. Two Nibelwerfers again, I'm not convinced they will do much. The enemy is down to 200 points. We are seeing tank destroyers moving westwards, slowly but surely. The position here has largely been overpowered, right from hit a mine, pack hiding. Moving up the right hand side though, Aljas making good progress, constantly shifting from side to side, leaning by example, good. Panzer Command going up, finally seeing some heavier armor. And there you go, Nibelwerf is raining down death on this area. Not really doing a lot of damage. One man killed so far. Perhaps the second one might do more damage. Tank destroyers through here, going in for the Medic Bunker. No real response. Troops are getting hit. Direct hit, in fact, on the anti-tank gun, more or less. And a bit of hit on the Medic Station. Pack here going to get saw out. Artillery fire against the MG. The salt going in there. Quite heavy medic bunker though goes down. A tragic loss for the Wehrmacht. Rangers and such pulling in there. Rangers with the Thompson submachine guns. The rather heavy submachine gun in fact. And of course the 116th Panzer Division was formed out of reserve Panzer Division and the remnants of the 16th Panzer Gunner Division from the Eastern Front. Had its own path battalion, but that was sent off to support the second Panzer Division during the fighting Enemy and the Maltain counterattack, as is known by the Americans, or Operation Lutig, as is known by the Germans. Pushing up there, more riflemen reform for Dami Champ. Heavy fighting here, Grenadiers versus riflemen. Grenade goes off. Heavy fighting here and assault going in against the Rifeman with Steel Granate. A concussive grenade, which rather didn't impress the Americans, who had their own fragmented grenade on. Of course, the Germans did have a fragmented sleeve for it. Well, of course, they also had rival grenades, but so did the Americans. In fact, all sides had them. In fact, the Germans even had anti-tank rifle grenades, although they were generally not very effective. Generally, anti-tank rifle grenades were not effective at all. And an Eagle went down, as predicted, in fact. Lots of artillery going in against that gun. It is still fighting on. Oh, they actually need to get away. Reinforcement. Tank destroyers falls away. The assault there. Panzer Command lighting up. Center cleared out again. I mean, the Americans are not doing this fully without some losses, but it rather seems to me like Al are doing most of the work. Your offbeat do not quite having his stay. Pioneers he is suffering unnecessarily, in fact, as Al is trying desperately to secure the center. And the Raven with the Patrick stolen from your offbeat. Stug 4, and we are actually seeing veteran here too, and that's nice. Stug 4, basically a replacement for the Stug 3 after the some of the Stug 3 factories were actually bombed and they rather couldn't afford losing assault guns for production lines so they actually had to 
take away production of Panzer Force for that, which was also considerably bad since again Panzer Force were another main tank. Though generally at one stage the Germans, well the Führer was generally considering just stopping all production of Panzer Force and just switching over to Panthers. Problem was they couldn't survive without the Panzer Force produced. As for as long as it took to settle over the entire industry towards Panthers. Armor car moving up here, Gladiators coming in from your offbeat dude, hoping to get enough of the Panzer's heck. And he's firing on the ground here, he does not want another tank, you know, getting back for the Americans, so they're waiting until Allied War Machine wears off. Of course, in coming here too, this will probably be less necessary, since of course from now on you'll actually gain veterancy with the German don't from each kill. So that certainly gives Allied War Machine some advantages, plus of course you can now actually risk handing over a tank to the opponent that way. So again, Allied War Machine, if it was to come in coming here too, would be considerably less powerful. Let's go have a look at Creation Fighter. Grenades going off here, left and right. Panther provides support with its high velocity 75mm gun, a quite powerful gun in fact. Could knock out most tanks in fact. And in fact it had more penetration power than a Tiger's gun. On the other hand the Tiger overall could do more damage with its 88mm gun. Range here on the run, Al Jasmine pushing up here, he should spread out his troops again, he knows his opponent has two Howard says, so really should be not clamping up there, Al Jas, what are you doing? And at the same time we're seeing more assault guns being pulled in from the assault gun battalion, which was generally the... Oh, Greyhound down, excellent, the Germans actually seem to be making some... a bit of a return, that is good, and we might be seeing the Howards are going down as well, lovely, lovely, but... Pull up the assault guns, pull up to the front, support the infantry, and again, hell yeah, spread them out. Sherman up here, fighting off some of Algez's troops. Howitzer could go down. Very close, very close. Shot bounces off. Ow. There we go, Howitzer down now. There's just the other Howitzer. And if. Perhaps one of them has gone for terror, that would be Algiers, yes. he would actually call in a V1 and sort it out. I'm hearing something. I think. Our war machine is up. Lots of troops here. Sherman about. And that there, there's a V1 somewhere, but... I don't know where. I'll try and sort of lay it down here. Not give us an idea. Oh. He was trying to catch a lot of units here, but overall, a bit of a waste. Definitely not the best. And of course, we see Armored Doctor now for Creation Fighter, by the way. Another next station could go down. This one actually survived. Veteran D2 for the Panther. But this one still is there. That is probably what the V1 should have been saved for instead. Tragically, it wasn't. And that's actually going to give them one how to defy. I mean, if they'd lost both howitzers. Um, oh, he's just built another one. Crikey. Well, the Americans were always fond of artillery. In fact, they were so fond of it, the Germans pretty much based tactics around it, which was largely relied on the German drawing the attention of the Americans. The Americans thinking, all right, we'll follow of artillery. That, the Germans will be gone. They weren't, they just moved back and then they quickly moved back in. So of course that was something, in fact at one stage it actually resulted in a large artillery shortage for the Americans simply because they didn't have munitions enough to fire it. Because again they tended not to make an attack without lots and lots of artillery support. So of course it's a little fun fact. Calliope he's joining in. Absolutely turning the center into a ashen wasteland. Bunker going down here to hold the victory point there. Americans pushing up their veterans with three riflemen. And again fighting around here. Assault again going in. Stunning and killing Americans indiscriminately. 32 kills. Nice job. Stug here fighting, surviving most of the bazooka shots. I mean, the thing is, I mean, veterans is certainly lovely for the Panzers, but I mean, 
For most of them, it does little, for example, for the Panther, I mean, beyond veterans you want, it only really protects against infantry, for example, that bit. I mean, in that sense, I think Aldias would be better off if you've just had gotten veterans you want, not bothered with veterans you two, and just gotten more tanks, more Panzer Force, for example, or another Panther, something like that. At this stage, he needs numbers, he needs more raw force. And we are actually seeing a Tiger out, veterans, if you, I mean, that's definitely going to be something. Rifle score down, oh, nasty. Looking at Algiers, who's obviously now gone for terror, and he might go for the right hand side now. Of course, get left hand side, I mean, actually get a King Tiger. Tank destroyed right here behind the bunker. Lots of artillery going into the centre. Ganea's trying to go for the central victory point. Minor effort here, but getting stopped by Sherman. Perhaps the Tiger should have been sent there. Panther getting repaired. Duke rushing in to try and deal with the tank store over there. Around the desperate holding operation by the Germans on the 116th. Stuke trying to get the tank destroyer, but now Rifle are moving in. Another tank destroyer and out. Damn it, Jimmy, that's actually an off map combat group. Running with more raw forces. And I think your offbeat dude could afford to be a bit more aggressive with his tiger as long as he's supported with false kind of air stormtroopers and perhaps that Stug. In that case, I think he should try and push up the center and perhaps try and get those howitzers. I mean, I really think if the Germans were to get those howitzers, they could actually win this. Um, otherwise, it's actually a lot more unclear. And again, the way the offbeat dude is playing, it could very well be that they lose. Falska here getting absolutely overwhelmed, suppressed, murdered by the Americans. And made considerably short work off. Horrific a massacre. Rather than rising up here and Sarge's mine detection abilities does not work, and they're all pinned and murdered. We are losing ground. Panther though rolling in, Panzer Kampfwagen 5th, Pied of the Fatherland. Catching the Yankees. And showing them what a real Panzer is. Stu Gold who joins in. We are seeing field repairs going up to try and keep the tanks a bit more in the fight. Lots of artillery against it, and Grenadiers are just getting murdered for Aldias again. He needs to be careful about climbing them up. Tiger here, coming a bit under fire, but largely shrugging off most of it. You can't really seem to hit anything. Down to two units for Aldias. Absolutely crippling losses. We are seeing a repair banker up. That seems to be about it. Tank destroyer gone. The tiger securing a kill. Panther pulling away. Five armored kills. Definitely a bit of an ace there. Or an ace in the making, anyways. Another Calliope Barrage. <laughs> Panther heavily damaged again. Rangers moving up, Tiger keeping them under fire, but points are ticking down. And they are getting overwhelmed on every angle. And does not look like there will be a King Tiger in time for Algiers. Stug down, Attilio on to full Grenadiers. Tiger rolls forward, Raven hit. Tiger taking quite a few hits. And the anti-tank gun crew is suffering. There we go, gone completely. Panther fighting against three tank destroyers. Gun is doing what they can with Panzer Tank support. And the Germans are actually sort of trying to make a Panzer Faust to replace the Panzer Tank. Basically a Panzer Faust that could fire more than one round. 
and that would actually have been ready well at some stage but never really got into production heavy fighting in the center the 116th fighting onwards but the second infantry division does seem to hold the advantage rather than getting blasted and the t panther is in a deplorable condition but he's still done quite a bit of damage but he, he's also gotten veteran c3 for that again I do think that Aldia has made a mistake again he should not have been focusing on just making one great panther he should have had several or several panzers I mean if he not bothered with veteran c3 or two he'd been having considerably more resources which could easily gun him another panther or several panzer fours and I think that would benefit the Germans a bit more in the longer run and would have allowed them to mount enough credible counter offensive instead I mean sure the Panther is alright but he generally never had a lot to sort of really keep the support to going well played from Aljaz and there we go AI has taken over Imagine you're off beat dude, there we go, leaving and game over, the 116th Panzer Division pulls away, he could not push through the defensive label down here by the Americans. And of course the question becomes, what were the problems for the Germans? What were the problems for the Americans? I mean, the Americans had a great start, you know, really aggressive, really, you know, everywhere, and of course that's really how the Americans work best. And of course the Germans didn't help him, but again, your off beat dude rather make the mistakes of spreading out his false guns initially, and kept sitting that in ones which rather allowed Americans quickly to gain the advantage and, you know, made it very difficult for the Germans to establish a foothold except a very small one over here. The bunker should have been placed further towards it so we could cover a large area and cover more wounded or Algiers should have gotten one of his own. Probably both would have been a better option. And this one didn't make much sense either. I mean, it didn't really do much. It didn't really didn't make any units except an MG and he put an MG then rather than having it support these other troops. And of course there was the problem with the storms was up here and that was absolutely catastrophic. And so rather continue, I mean later on he was able to stabilize it but his initial mistakes rather made it difficult for the Germans. The problem with Algiers was later on partly he kept climbing up his kind of this when he knew there was artillery and partly I don't think he should have invested all those resources into veterancy. I think he should have gone for more panzers to sort of keep things going and he should also not have gone for all those panzer tricks he saw a lot of infantry at least one MG I think could have turned the tide if one gun didn't upgrade there and of course again no attempt to get a V1 in here I think that could also have generally helped the Germans considerably nice job though of course with the two minutes in here for Dami Chem certainly helped him keep up with some of his losses good doctrine usage good cooperation between the two with the trio sense and such very nice that very nice indeed good map control and such so there you go hope you enjoyed this match if you did why not subscribe and tell your friends and if you didn't well why not send a replay of your own this is imperial dane saying cheers